Hi everybody, I'm Tony Visco. I'm your host with Painting for Pleasure. And uh, I just did this whole series over here on the left hand side because we're continuing with mixing colors. And I did it and I was speaking to the camera and I wasn't recording a thing. So let me tell you what I did rather than me repeat this, but I'll, I'll, I'll do this a little bit at a time. What I did is I put my brush in water, took a lot of water in the brush, took the water out of the brush as we did last week, the last time we met. And I came in here and I took 50% of my blue, which is red shelter marine blue that we're using, and I put it up here. And then I came in and I did the same thing with my alizarin crimson. 50% of the alizarin crimson and I put it over here. And what I did is I mixed the purple. 50% red, 50% blue makes my purple. If I'm going to use French ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson, I'm going to get one type of purple. Nice dark piece right there. Okay. If I used cobalt blue instead of French ultramarine blue, and I use the Lizard and Crimson, I'm going to get a purple also, but it's going to be different because the Cobalt Blue has a different mixture or it's a different value and a different color tone than my French Ultramarine Blue, different pigment entirely. So we'll get a different mixture. But for this, in, if I go to Cerulean Blue and Lizard and Crimson, the same thing's gonna happen. Here, let me just do something. Let's do this. Let's take cerulean blue. I have I have cobalt blue there. Let's take cerulean blue. And then I'm going to mix the cerulean blue with my alizarin crimson. Right, cerulean blue and alizarin crimson. And this purple here that I've got right now, nice big here, let me just show it to you. That purple is different than that purple. Still purple, 50% of each mixture, but different, a different purple. It's logical. If I used, um, if I, here, I'll use lilac, which is a blue... All right, let me put it in here like this. And I took and I added alizarin crimson to that, a little bit of alizarin crimson to that. See what I'm talking about? Different purple entirely. Now, again, these are purples. Here I mixed French ultramarine blue, right there. And I took yellow ochre for my yellow. And I mixed those two together. And those two together gave me an olive green color. However, if I take yellow ochre and I put it in here, and that's a little bit more watery than I want, so hang on for a second. But I put the yellow ochre in there, and I take some cerulean blue in there. I have an olive green, but it's a different shade of olive green. Look, it's still olive green, but it's totally different than that olive green. That pigment is darker than the pigment that I use here for cerulean blue. Deeper and more intense, and I use that at 50% much darker. So again, depending on how you mix your colors, you're going to get different values, whether or not you're doing it 50%, 50%, or 75%, 25%, 75% yellow, 25% blue. Be interesting to see if I did that here, if I take my blue and I put it right over here, and then I just add 25% of my yellow. What I'm gonna get is a is it gonna I'm gonna get a totally different color. Look, it's gonna be more blue. It's 
gonna be more blue than yellow. All right? And if I took my yellow ochre and I only took a slight bit of my French ultramarine blue and put it in here and I mixed it up again this is going to be yellow with a little bit of blue so 75 percent yellow with a little bit of blue and I'm going to come up with a different color Got to get more 75% color here, more yellow, because it's got to be more yellow. This is going to be more yellow green. These are all olive greens, sort of, but this is going to be more of a blue green. More, more yellow green and more of a 50% mixture of that olive green in the center. So it's a mixing process that you want to learn to do to make your colors that you're going to work with to paint. Now these are pure colors, because I'm not going to be able to take yellow in blue and make a neutral as I told you in the past neutrals are wonderful to use neutrals can be used for shadows as a matter of fact you want to use those for shadows as opposed to let's say introducing for your shadow uh, a natural gray uh, a Payne's gray or black cut down it, 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 you're introducing a f totally different kind of color in there, much too intense, so they're not going to give you that natural look that you want for shadows in your painting. So the way to, way to make those shadows is actually go in here and actually take your yellow, your blue, and your red and mix this neutral that's in here. That's a better shadow because it's consistent of both all of the colors that you're using in your primary painting. So I want you to keep that in mind as you go forward and you do this stuff. This is important. Mixing colors is important. And, and the only way that you can mix grays, now you can do a third, a third, and a third. That may work. But if you want a nice gray, you may want to use, um, oh, I don't know, let's say 60% Okay, let's do this. Take the blue. Let's get the blue in here. Okay. And add maybe the red. Maybe, let's say that's 60% and maybe 30% red. And maybe 10% yellow. It's probably too much yellow, but okay. And then mix these together. Don't be afraid to mix. Scrub it around. Make sure it's nice and mixed. And look at the gray you get. Those three colors make an interesting gray. Okay. Now it's ten percent red. 30% yellow, 60% blue, so the gray is going to be on the cooler side, the more bluer side. If I add a little bit more red to it, what's going to end up happening is that it's going to be a warmer red. It's going to be a warmer gray. But that's basically what I'm doing, is mixing colors that we can use in our paintings that... Uh, support the painting that we're we're working with. I'm not introducing black. I'm not coming over here and introducing a totally foreign color to that. I'm using the colors that I've got to mix for the, my shadows, my gray areas. Now you've seen me do this too a lot of times. I will take and I will take, let's take my blue, okay, French ultramarine blue, and with French ultramarine blue I will add I'm going to wash out my brush good, take my, my sponge, take the water out of here, pick up, in this case, I, like I always do, I always tell you to make a nice decent gray, add some burnt sienna. 
and you get that nice black rich flavor. Look, let me just run it out here a little bit. See the gray? The reason for that is because my blue is pure, but my burnt sienna is made up of red and yellow, as well as everything else that's in here. But it has red in it and it has yellow in it. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm adding with burnt sienna those three colors. I'm adding all three. Here's, here's my burnt sienna. It's a little bit more flavorful in that, in that it's a little bit more burnt sienna-ish or brownish. And if I add my blue to that, I'm going to get that nice rich gray. Look, look, look at this. Look at that gray. It's absolutely gorgeous. And that gray is not only gorgeous, that gray works with everything else in here because I'm working with blue and I'm working with the red and the yellow. I'm not going and mixing black in there. That's my black. It's turning gray. So this is a neutral color. This is a neutral color. Right? These aren't because it's, it's yellow and it's, and it's blue. And these aren't because it's red and it's blue. And those two, you can't make neutrals that way. You can make rich purples and rich greens. For instance, if I used, if I took my cerulean blue as an example, and I put my cerulean blue in here, Let's do that. Nice cerulean blue. Okay, make a nice little circle here. All right, and wash out my brush and pick up another color. Let me just pick up. Let me pick up. Um, my opera. All right, you've seen me use opera before. All right, look at look now. So I'm going to introduce opera to this. And look at that purple. Right, that that purple with that with opera, which is a which is a basically a magenta type color, very pinkish red, and my cerulean blue. The two are going to make a beautiful purple. Right now, that beautiful purple. If I add. A little bit of yellow to it, and I'm just going to take my new gamboge and add a little bit of yellow to that. And we're going to start mixing this. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to mix blue more. I, what I just, just did is I took a lot of blue, a lot of my cerulean blue. All right, which is basically 60% of that. And I added a little bit stronger yellow in here, my new gamboge. So I'm going to still make that nice greenish color. But then I'm going to add my red to it, which is my opera. And you mix that around and you stop mixing it and you're going to end up with the same thing. You're going to end up with The three colors, which are neutral, and you're going to create a warmer neutral as you come across. Now it's going to be a greener neutral too. But look, it's a neutral as you come across. You got you can't help it because you got these three colors that you're mixing in here. So. The different variations of what you what you apply, you know. Hey, hey let me get, let me do this. Let's take seventy percent yellow. Let's take seventy. Let's take a lot of yellow. Here's, here's my new gamboge. Okay, we got we got some new nice uh, nice new gamboge in here. <clears throat> and let's let's take new gamboge and let's add. Um, let's add a little opera to the new gamboge. See that? Mixing that up. Let's add a little bit more. Let's add a little bit more of my new gamboge to that. 
See my color? My color is sort of like an orangish yellow. Well, if I do the same thing, and I use a cooler yellow, this is Naples yellow, and I add my opera to it, look what you get. Look at the skin tone. That's, that's a nice color for skin. And if you lighten it up a little bit more, you can even add a little bit of, I can add a little bit of alyssum crimson on this side to get my skin tone darker. See that? I can add a little bit more Naples yellow on this side to make it a little lighter. But I've got a lovely skin tone that's here. I actually have a skin tone here too, but it's not as apparent to you. But that would be apparent based on based on, based on the fact that I, I would, depending on what I would add to that. All right, so, so my yellow and my red If I add a little bit more here, yeah, let's just do this. Look, at I'm going to just bring this yellow out, and I'm going to start adding a little bit more opera to this as we go along. And you're going to see what happens. You can change this up, and you can create some wonderful skin tones, adding a little bit of water. Mixing colors is critical to good painting because you not only get the benefit of the mixing of colors, but you get a natural gradation of values that go on here that um, that you can't get any other way. What I'd like to do is I'm going to get some fresh water here. I want to dump this out. Dump this out. Let's get some fresh water. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to we're going to do a graded wash, and we're going to do the we're going to do a graded wash in multiple colors. Now we did a graded wash in the past, but we used if you if you if you remember what we did, we used one color when we did the graded wash. We took one color only to do that graded wash. Right? We used red, if you remember. Those of you that were with me. And we used blue. We didn't use yellow because yellow is not as powerful a color. So if you take a look at, if we want to do a graded wash, do you remember what I told you before? What we're going to do is we're going to make, we're going to start to make some consistent colors here consistent so let's take and get a we're gonna do it two ways I'm gonna water I'm gonna wash out my brush get it all nice and clean and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my blue all right so let's mix my blue up and we're gonna come over here and I'm gonna just I'm gonna here's what I'm gonna do on dry paper we're gonna do this on dry paper first I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna do a couple of swatches. Remember what I said? Take your color and do one swatch, then overlap it by 50% to do another swatch, okay? So let's do, let's do one more. Let's do three. Okay, overlap it, one more. Now I'm using dry paper. So I'm going to wet my brush again, and I'm going to pick up a little bit of alizarin crimson, and I'm going to come in here with my alizarin crimson now, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come in here with an overlap. Okay. Now, I'm going to wet my brush, and I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to pick up a little bit of a, let's say, yellow, yellow ochre. Okay. Overlap. 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 Okay. Come in here and pick up maybe a little bit of my new gamboge. Overlap, overlap, 
overlap. Now this is on dry paper and now I'm going to just take water and I'm just going to water it out, water it out, water it out, soften it, more water, water, and I'm overlapping, okay? Just overlapping. Okay, clear water to nothing. It looks like I dropped some water in there, so unfortunately what's going to happen with that is that gonna, that's going to end up being problematic. Now this is dry. This is on dry paper. By problematic, what's, what I mean is, is that this, that's going to end up having a blossom in there. Because uh, I, when I was moving my brush over, I wasn't careful enough and I dropped a bunch of water in there. We can take that water out. Probably should. Let me just, so it doesn't, well, let's see what just happens. Here, let, let it degrade. Let's just let it grade. But here's my my point. We have a we have a graded wash on dry paper, and that graded wash was done with wet a wet brush, wet paint on dry paper. Now we're gonna do the same thing over here, and this is using multiple colors. Last time we did this, what did we do? We used the same color. But I want you to see how the transaction or the transaction that is made here when you go from cool colors like blue into warm colors like reds and yellows. You can create some interesting effects and much better than that you can create much more interesting effects if you do this and it's wet. So let's just take this, let's just wet this. There's a slight there's a slight cast to it, there's a slight yellowish cast to it, but that's okay. And now we're going to take watery, wet brush, wet paint. Okay, the consistency that we're using now is the consistency of milk or water. Alright, so we're going to start here and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to overlap, 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 overlap. Pick up my red, watery red. Then this red I'm using is alizarin crimson. All right? Overlap, 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 overlap. What I'm doing is I'm covering 50% of that. Then I'm going to go to my yellow ochre. Okay? Overlap, overlap, overlap. Okay? And we'll go to my... Here, I'll t this time we'll just put in... I'll put in some Naples yellow down here. Overlap. Look at the difference. See what? A little bit more. Con okay. The Naples yellow is a little beefier. Let's do this. Let's go to an orange. Let me take my cadmium orange. Oh, that's not. I can't do that. Hang on. Let's just. We need to wet this. Well, I'm just going to let this watery. Just go right down here. My point on all this is that if I do this, I'm going to go back to a bright color. A little bit of cadmium orange, and then we'll go to my yellow ochre. I mean, sorry, my new gamboge. Okay, and then we're just going to wet it down to nothing. All right, so you're going to watch this dry. That's going to dry a lot harder. This is going to dry with much more transparency to the colors. But look at this, what you can create. You can create some very interesting cool colors. You know, I'm going to put a big stroke, I'm going to just come up here at the top and put and re reposition this because this is still wet. So now I'm going to put, what I'm going to do is take my pigment is going to be the consistency of butter and my brush is going to be drier. I just put a solid, I want to just put some solid colors back up in here and let that sort of wick down, okay? Just so that you can see the strength of this. So I'm going from one color to, I'm going from cool to warm through my reds. Can you see that? What's happening here? Look, I'm just going back and lifting out where that water was. Created an area right there that's a big area of a blossom and I just didn't want it to dry so I just
pulled it out. You can go back in here now. I can go back in here and just play around with this. But I'll never, that. see that? Now I'm just covering it over. Just want to show you what happens. You guys, you want to play with this stuff and rework it. This is not what we should be doing. But you can do it. But, but what's going to happen here is if I don't continue this down, water, you, you'll see what happens. Hang on. All right. I just, what I did is, if this was not totally dry yet, and I went back and I manipulated that area a little bit, but you see it, see this here? I'm going to have a hard edge. You can see the line that's right in here. There's a line down there and a line down there. I'm going to end up maintaining a high, hard edge over there. So what that means basically is, is that you've got to be very careful about trying to go in there and fix this. You must let it absolutely dry, bone dry, before you do anything like that. And then you can glaze on top of it. But, but if you try to do this, if it's not bone dry, you're going to run the risk of doing what I just did here, which is create a, a line or a pattern in there. Okay, so what we're, being, what we're working with is multiple of colors to create this graded wash. Now, a good graded wash shouldn't show you any streaks. If we do this correctly, this paper here is a, a test piece of paper that I'm working with. And it's a harder paper that I normally work with. I would have been, been able to do this a little bit more successfully on the softer papers that I use. This is a mechanical piece of paper, but it still works. It still does it. It's not too much of a problem. You can do it. I'm going to just put this aside and let it dry. And then we're going to come back and I'm going to do a few more things. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to do sort of like some transparent layers and glazes and so forth. But before we even get to that point, what I want to do is, the, the one thing I wanted to point out to you is this, because I didn't point it out. You see this, when we did this here, and we have this transition, think of this as the sky in your background, with, and then all of the sky area is just, you know, the sun is coming up and it's warm at the bottom and it goes up to a blue sky. So you get a graduation of, there's a natural gradation process and it graduates from warm to cool. So that's, that's why you want to use more than one color when you do this stuff, because it doesn't get stagnant, it's dynamic. Much more interesting, much more energetic. So, um, you, we have talked, and we've done this in the past, but I'm going to just go ahead and do this right now. I'm going to draw this in first. Let me get a pencil. And uh, this technique is just basically watercolor, and in, in this watercolor thing is great for giving you depth. And, and, and building different tones. So let's just take, I'm going to just draw a little bit of a, this mountain scene back here. I'm going to put a mountain back there and we'll do one over here, a little bit in the foreground and then maybe we'll do a, another area in the foreground and we'll probably do one. And we're just going to do four or five layers of this stuff right here. So here's my, here's my sort of painting right in that area. So one, two, three, four. Okay, so what I want to do here, you know, I got a pencil in my ear. I went fishing for another pencil. It's just to give you some idea, the, the more water that you add the lighter and the more transparent the layers are going to be. So, the further away, this the, the, the closest things are going to be, should be darker, closer to you. So, for instance, let's, let's take a, a brush. We'll use this brush right here. Let me get, let me wet this up. And we're going to start with, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with, um, my first transparent layer. And it's the lightest layer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna work with the lightest layer. So let me just take some water and we'll just use the blue. I'll just go through this and we'll just use 
We're going to use the uh, French ultramarine blue that I talked. To, I I did here, and my water was a little bit dirty. But here, let's just put. Let's just go in here. Let's say that I want my. Here's my my mountain in the background. Okay. See how light that is. All right. Nice light. Nice light area in the background. And as I come. As I come forward, now I should let that thoroughly dry. Okay, I should let that thoroughly dry. So let's just do that. Let's just let it, you know, we'll fan it a bit. And take and let the, uh, the water seep into the paper. And now that the sheen is off the paper, I'm going to go back and I'm going to make my next layer here. All right, so this is going to be a little bit, a little bit darker. Okay, and I'm going to come up into the mountain, and it should be still soft enough so that I shouldn't get a hard line, but here, this is my next layer. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing. The next layer I'm going to bring up is going to be even a little dark. All I'm doing is I'm using, I'm using my French ultramarine blue to do this with, and I'm just getting darker and darker as I come forward. All right. So the same thing, we want this, we don't want this to really bleed all over the place. We want it to be dry enough so that I can put my paint down there without it, it just going all over the place. I want some control over the shape. So here's my next shape. I'm going to come in here, come up over this way here. Make this, make this about a little darker. And guys, I'm not. This is nothing magical. I'm not doing this. I'm. I'm actually doing this from a book. Uh, we did this before. There's no reason for me to reinvent the wheel here. This is just basically from from uh, one of the main, many books that I have. But it just goes to show what can happen, right? So I have three layers of darkness right now, and I'm going to do one more. I'm going to let that. I got to let that dry though, a little bit more. I don't have to let it dry thoroughly. I just have to let it dry enough so that the moisture, the glisten, the gl is off the page. Because this is too wet to put anything in right now. If I put anything close to that, it's just going to spread. So I need to let it dry enough so that when I add my darker foreground, right? and these are all transparent layers, by the way, you know, basically, they're, we're seeing through this paint to the color underneath. But essentially, what's happening is I'm just adding a touch more paint every time I put my different layer down. So, if I do that, and I get, and I, and I, this is still too wet, so I have to wait a little bit. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start down here with some real thick pigment. French ultramarine blue. Okay, more pigment than water. Now, normally, what I do here is I'm going to just put the French ultramarine blue in here right now. I may have to, in order to show you the effect of this, I may have to go in here and, and add. I'm going to have to add something to this to get, make it even darker. So I'm going to take and add my burnt sienna to my, in my French ultramarine blue together. And I'm going to put that in over this. But I'm going to let that dry first. But even with that, even with that, what I just d did, you should be able to see comfortably that I have a darker layer in front, medium layer, lighter medium layer, and a very light layer back here. So you should be able to see some transition. The farther away the subject is, the lighter it is, and the less detail you can see in what's going on. You will see more detail always in the foreground. You will see some detail in the midground, 
but you're not going to see a lot of detail in the background. I mean, just it makes good sense. It just, just it's it's logical if you think about it. So I'm going to do this here, and I'm going to do the same thing, and I'm going to and I'm going to use a multiple of colors. Let me just, where's my pencil again? There you go, my, on my ear, where it should be, at, right? So let's do this. Let's do the same thing. Let's draw this in here, my foreground. All right. My, as I go back in space, um, mountain in the background, big mountain in the background, all right? Yeah. Okay, so let's do this another way. Let's go and take a mixture of my... Um, what I'm doing is I'm taking a mixture of my French ultramarine blue and my alizarin crimson. And I'm putting a lighter area back here. All right? French out, and I'm adding, you'll see it, I'm changing it up a little bit, adding a little bit more alizarin crimson to this here. Okay, so what I have is now what? A little bit of, I started off with French ultramarine blue in this area here. You know, I'll throw a little bit in there just so you can see it. This is wet, and I went from a little bit of French ultramarine blue to a little bit of French ultramarine blue. The mixture of French ultramarine blue in, in my uh, alizarin crimson. But more blue. Now I added over here a little bit more alizarin crimson to it, which changes it up. So I go from, I have, I'm going to the background, my mountain in the background. But it is also a mountain in the background that is moving in terms of warm to cool. Right? Warmer on this side, cooler on this side. All right, let's do the same thing here. Let's just take a little bit of more water. We'll do clear water over here. And I'm going to come in here with, I'm going to wet this now. Wet it lightly. Because I'm going to end up getting some bleed in here because it's still wet. But I'm going to just, nonetheless, I'm going to wet it lightly. All right. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come in here with a little bit more French Alza Marine Blue mixture with my alizarin crimson. All right, and I'm putting it in wet into wet. See what I'm doing here? All right. And when I'm going to let that set up a little bit. And I'm going to come over here now, and I'm going to make, a, I'm going to actually put another mountain back here. All right. All right. Come in here with a little bit more of my blue. I want this darker. Okay. Taking away a little bit more of my blue over here, making it darker. And a little bit more of my alizarin crimson. We're just using the two. All right. Now while that's while that's drying out, I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna. A little bit of burnt sienna and my French ultramarine blue together, and I'm going to make this even darker. All 
this is important. I want you to see this because this is this is going to show you how to move things back in space. All right, so I'm making this darker in the foreground. All right, let's make a little here. We'll make a little, a little bit of tree there, and maybe a few bushes. I don't know. Plants in the foreground. How's that? All right. We're going to let that dry. And now I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to make this even darker by mixing these two together. French ultramarine blue, my alizarin crimson. into the, it's wet, it's drier than it was, but it's still wet enough for me to spread here you go, more French ultramarine blue on this side here, I changed it up a bit all right. I want you to see basically what happens, and I'm going to have to wet this, and I have to let that dry. I got to let that dry because I got to put my next coating in there, and I'm going to do the same thing. Now, the only reason I added on this one here, I added my um, my brown in there, my, my burnt sienna in there with my French ultramarine blue is to make that French ultramarine blue darker because I had placed a little bit too dark a pigment over here. But you can see how I'm, how I'm moving things back in space. This one, one color, but this is much more interesting because this is a multiple of colors. There's more than one color that's going on over here. So you have consistent movement as you go back. And you've got changes of value not only do you have changes of value, but you can change this from warm to cool. So let's take and see if we can just beef this right up a little bit here. This foreground. Nice and dark. Okay. Nice and dark. I'm doing this without too much, any white space because I gotta I wanna I'm gonna go back down here and I'm gonna put some white space in here in a minute. But this is two colors to create the illusion of going back in space. And one of the things that's interesting here is, is that if I want to put as I'm accents in here, I'm only using two colors now, guys, right? So let's take some water, some fresh water, and we're going to lift out with fresh water a couple of things. I want to lift, I'm just going to wait, lift, I'm going to just show you what can happen. This is pure color, so we should be able to come in here, and if we want, if we want to bring in some light area, we can do that. Yeah? See that? We just made a highlight here. Well, the same thing can, it can be applied here if we want to lighten this area over here a little bit is to come in and do the same thing. Add some water. A little bit of light, light area. I'm coming around this ridge in the mountain here, coming down in this one here, 
and I'm taking a light spot out of that and I'm doing the same thing over here I'm just going to come back over here a little bit and make this whole area back here a little bit lighter by taking, taking and removing the color All right. and when this thoroughly dries we'll do the same thing you can lift out your lights and I'm gonna go just do this so that you can see what I'm talking about All right, you can lift out your lights if you want to put some lights in there you want to make some accent colors here here look let's soften this up side of the mountain All right. So I can move this stuff back in space. Not only can I move it back in space, but I can create different light and dark areas by simply lifting out. There's yes, alizarin crimson is a staining color. You can see it in here. I'm not going to lift it out to the paper. You'll see some of that stuff being stained, but with the mixture of French ultramarine blue, um, it's going to work to our favor and it's, it will lift out enough so that you can be able to see the lights and the darks going on back here but I've moved back in space with this one color this because it's, it's two colors alizarin crimson and French ultramarine blue it's a much more interesting component forget the composition now I'm just talking about the color of this stuff it's all I'm talking about I need to get this, this is going to be a little drier, so while we're waiting for that to dry, let's go on to do a few other things. We're going to start, we're going to, in all paintings we work with shapes. Um, and it's important to understand how to handle those shapes. So what I'm going to do is take you through some basics by using the brush and the brush technique to create some basic shapes and how to do that so that they're convincing. What I'm doing or what I would like you to do is to learn how to use the brush and walk the brush and turn the brush, the hairs of the brush, um, in different area, different different angles, and push. And you're going to be pushing, and you're going to be pulling uh, to create certain types of things, like like the pattern of trees, leaves, grass. Um, what I'm doing is I'm just over here washing out my my palette. So. If I take, first of all, if I take a wet area, let me just take a big brush here. And let's just wet, the first thing we're going to do is just wet, wet this area right here. I want to wet the paper because what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet a square, right? And I'm going to walk, and I'm just going to drop in. some color. What I just did is I went, picked up a brush with a wet brush, picked up some paint, and I'm just dropping it in. Okay, see what I'm doing? I'm just dropping it in. I want you to see this. Okay. Let's take a little bit of that color, maybe a little bit of cobalt blue. Change up the color a bit. Cerulean blue, cobalt blue, maybe a little darker stuff up, up maybe maybe some even darker stuff up in this area here. Maybe some brown, darker areas, some of my mixture of French ultramarine blue. 
So I got some real dark, heavy, clouded areas here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let that go. Just leave it alone. Because what we're going to do is we're going to create a sky pattern, but we're going to allow it to paint itself. I just dropped some color in there. That's all I did. Over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some water. in this direction. It's a bit gray, isn't it? Yep. And I'm going to take a lot of pigment. I'm using cobalt blue now, combination of French ultramarine cobalt blue, starting in the dry area and lifting up and working into the wet area. And just sweeping it down Okay, and we're going to leave it alone. I just want to take and wet this down here a little bit more. And just right, to let it go. So we're letting that go and we're letting that go. Right? We, we're doing this for a reason. We want, I want you to get to understand how to use the brushes and how to create certain types of effects. What I'd also like to do is to do this. Let's let's make a let's make a green. Let's take my cobalt blue and my yellow. My what I'm doing is the yellow I'm using right now is my new gamboge, so I've made this green. And in terms of my green, it the but the consistency right now is that of not butter, but maybe a, maybe a creamy consistency. Okay? And what I'm going to do is just pack the, pack the paper, move the paper around, move the colors around, scrumble it a little bit, and take advantage, and take advantage of the dry paper and the texture of the paper. That's all one color now, right? So we want to get something a little darker, so we want to throw a little bit of darker colors in here. And maybe even a little bit darker. All right. And then simply take a small brush Come in here, and in the center area, wherever you're going to put the tree trunk, because this is all my my foliage. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and lift out with water, right? Water. Okay. I'm lifting out. I'm lifting the water. I'm lifting the color out of the. Here's my trunk. And I'm coming in here and I'm lifting the, I'm taking the water and putting it into this area and lifting the color out. All right, drawing it down. This is my trunk. Okay, so I've got some light and some dark. Let's go back in here and throw a little bit more. Scrumble, scrumbled, scruff it, 
little bit more darker areas where the blue is here and there. Okay, so I've got three values. I got a light value, a mid value, and a dark value. And I got a light out. I lightened out my tree trunk because what I'm going to do now is take my burnt sienna, and I'm going to take this this small the heel of the brush, lay the brush flat, and scrape it down. Okay, so I have, I'm going to have a darker side, add some blue to that, that area. And the only thing I'm going to do right now is to wait a little bit and take my thin brush, which is my rigger brush. And I'm going to add some twigs to this. So this is all water, a lot of water, very little pigment. and just start to shape my trunk. Okay. You need some trunks in here, you need some branches in there, and they need to be darker. Some of them need to be darker. Can't be afraid of the darks, but you want them to be accents. These colors are going to be accents. Those darks are going to be accents, not, you don't want to put too much of it in there. You want a little bit, a little bit here and a little bit there. Okay. Tree here, tree here, come up and drag it, scrape it. Okay, so you can see what happens. You get yourself a you get yourself an interesting, an interesting tree trunk. Yeah, we'll even make this a little bit darker over there because we'll let this light come in over this side. This is going to be dark over here. And then when it dries, you can go back in here and play around with this if you want and put. Dark areas, leaves out here, for instance, so that you can help make this even a little bit more convincing. All right, but there you go. So I have a tree with a trunk, green, varying colors, much more interesting than just one monotone color. Let me go back to this here, over here. I think we can see this. Pretty sure you should be able to see this. But let's just make this a little bit darker. Let me see if I can just make this area right here. Put a couple of little dark bushes in here. And what's, what's more interesting is if I, if I actually brought up to help make this a little bit more convincing here. Okay. You can see that dark against the light. 
my dry brush, a couple of trees, a couple of branches. All right, no, no, no leaves on them. They're just going to leave there. I just did that so that you can see the difference. But you can see beyond this. You've got the darker area is closest to you. The lightest area is way in the background. All right. Pushing. Pulling. Taking the brush. Taking the, taking the color, look what you can do. Let's do it with a little darker, a little bit, a little bit darker pigment. Maybe you can see it a little bit better. Let me try it again. Right? I'm splaying the hairs. So I'm using the natural dryness of the paper to create my light spots and dark spots. If I put it in here, that's wet. It's all, all right? So you're not going to get it. You're not going to get as much going on. But, to be honest with you, what's going to end up happening here is what's going to tell a story is all the stuff on the edges. The edges tell you what's going on. Not the stuff in the center. You know, I can do this all day long, but that's not really going to tell us anything. That's not going to tell us the story. What's going to tell us the story about what's going on here is everything that's going to go on on the edge. But you can use the brush, using the brush in different ways. If I can do this, if I can show you this, you can make effects by taking your brush and creating different effects. Who's to say that can't be sand dune uh, brush along the sand dune, you know? That, that, that's a very plausible possibility here, look. You can't paint that unless you, that, that, that's a natural process. I mean, it's, it's a lot easier just to do it that way than to try to paint it. Let's add... This is my tree over here. So, all of these things are very plausible and very possible by brush technique and by gradation of color. And here's a natural process in the sky, all right? This is a natural process. Take a look at this and you can see how it looks and then you can say, how best can I use that application? Look at this stuff here, it's beautiful. It just did whatever it wanted to do. It's a gorgeous little piece and you can do a lot with it. Splaying, not painting every leaf, but splaying the brush hairs, scrum, scrum, doing a, taking the brush and, and, and scuffling it. I don't know if you can... All right, scuffling it. Just but See what I'm doing? I'm moving the brush up and down. All I'm doing is I'm skipping. It's not getting into the total paper because it's a relatively dry brush on dry paper. And what basically is happening here is, is that I'm taking advantage of the texture of the paper. I'm taking advantage of the texture of the paper to create the illusion that I want to create. Grass. Um, it could be, actually, I could be creating uh, light on the water. I could be creating fencing. There's a lot of different things that I can create by just taking advantage of the texture of the paper. 
And that's one of the ways to do it. It's just lightly Yeah. Lightly go over it. Change up the colors. See what happens? Now, with the paper like this, the problem with the paper like this versus handmade paper is you can see in here that you have standard ridges, the standard patterns that are going on here. So, you really, I'm doing this on this kind of paper because, because I'm working with the process of teaching you how to create certain things. But normally if you use a good sheet of paper, a handmade paper, you'd get a variety of textures in here that wouldn't be consistent like this. That's why it's good to stay away from any mechanical papers. Okay guys, what I think I'm going to do is just call it a day. Um, we've worked out a couple of different pro processes here to, to play around with. I love this little piece here. I love this stuff too because this is really it lends itself to all of that sort of cool brush. It could be anything. This is not such a good thing when you have a continual pattern, but this will give you an idea as to how to get back in space, how to get back in space, and the more colors you use, the better this is going to be. So we've worked out a little bit of gray, putting shadows in. Um, the shadows actually down here, if I was going to do this as a shadow, again, those neutral colors would be down in here. If, if well, it'd be, actually it would be on the other side. Let's do this. The shadows on this side, so you'd, be end up, you'd end up with the ground shadow down in this area here. All right, and, and actually even some of this stuff that would be darker to help this tree along, shadow-wise, on that side, shadow on that side, okay? Remember, the shadows and neutrals. Nice brush stuff here. Just going to do one little thing here. If you take this and you add, now that this is dry and I just w wet this, look what's going to happen here. I'm going to wet this here. Wet it up good, and I'll take a little bit of sandy color. And what's the sandy color I'm going to use? I'm going to take a little bit of my Opera, mixed up with my Naples Yellow, make it nice and wet, come in here and just softly put a little bit of sand in there. And maybe certain areas will just beef it up here and there and let it dry. All right, now what I'm doing is I'm taking, I, I've got this light sandy color that's over here, which will dry out. And I'm taking a little bit of my mixture that I did, my neutral colors. All right. And I've mixed them all together, and I'm just coming in here, and I'm just maybe some shadow. Let me show you how I can create an interesting painting here. Maybe we make this a little darker here. So see, you got you got some. You got that soft pattern with that stuff that's going on up there, and you can enhance that. You put that in there, right? Just a splay of the brush. And you can come in here and just, if you want to, just add a few darks. Right? Shadowed area, add a few darks. Yeah. I'm just picking up my green, my little green with blue, a little darker. All right? And just tat touch it a little bit here and there, add a few darks. You know, we'll, we'll make this a little bit of a, even darker. And maybe we got a, maybe we got a, maybe what we do have here is we have a, 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 a scrub pine that's, that's here, you know. 
Maybe we just make that a real, you know how they, they sort of follow the ground and a little scrub pine here and there. Make this a painting. All right, a little tiny dock here. My little scrub pine. You can turn the thing into anything you want. Maybe make this a little darker. But look at this tone back here. This is interesting. This sandy tone. It kind of works to your favor, you know what I mean? And these little darks over here that I'm putting in right now are designed literally to enhance... You know, you're not putting so, many, so much dark in that area right there to make it uncomfortable. What you're doing is you're putting just enough to make a statement. And assuming that I, let's assume I, I said, well, it's just, I want to just maybe lighten this up a bit. So what I did, added a little water and just pulled out some of that color. Right? Add a little water, pull out some of that color, add a little water. Pull out some of that color, and you can see what happens. I've got this nice light area and dark area that's going on over here. I've got the tonal values in there that I want. That could make for a nice painting. You take a sky like this behind it, you got a nice piece. All of this stuff is applicable. You just need to understand how to make these things happen. Even this, I can see what's happening here. See what happened here? You got a little bit of a blossom that came in here. Well, who's to say that's not the top of a wave? I mean, you know, you don't know. If it looks like something like that, hell, maybe you can use it to your advantage. I don't know. Ugh. Yeah, just add a little bit of something there. And maybe take a little ground cover. Yeah, I mean, you could do that. It could be waves breaking over here on a rock. A lot of good stuff can happen. Even this. Go back in here. Remove water. This, this was just, you know, let, let's make this more interesting. Take some water and come in here and make, let the water eat at that now. Okay. Lift it out. Look. See what I mean? You can bring out, you can remove areas with so that you can create some interesting things. You know, you got this branch going up here. Maybe you got one that's coming this way as well. Yeah, you got a you got a big area coming up here, so let's make that maybe maybe you want this darker. All right, but you can have some light branches and some dark branches. Hell, who's to say? You, it's up to you. You're the artist. 
you can create some interesting stuff when you do this. You know, let's just remove let's remove some of that stuff up in the top. I have my undercolor there. So you can actually you can actually see what can happen. You can lift out, put stuff back in. There you go. I mean, there's so many little fun things that you can do. This is a tree, that's a tree. You got some sky, you got a wave coming in here, you're hitting some rocks that are over here. It's got a beautiful sky. See, just dropping some water in and letting it go and doing whatever it wants to do. Lots of good stuff that you can do. This helps you. Mixing helps you. Do this over and over. You're gonna find that the more you play around with mixing colors and doing stuff like this from light to dark, so you go from warm to cool and do these, um, these wonderful gradations, you become a better painter. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for being with me. I'm your host, Tony Visco. Uh, hit like me on Facebook, if you will, please. Appreciate it. You can find me on Facebook. I'm on YouTube. Obviously, you guys go up sometimes and use the videos that I put up there. Uh, my website is www.panthonyvisco.com and tell your friends would like to be able to increase uh, my student rate so I'd, I'd like it if you can just pass the word. Thanks an awful lot. Take care. Bye-bye.